okay so good evening everybody and uh, today we can continue talking about heuristics eh? uh, last week we have the look at the methodology for heuristic evaluation and uh, now we are going to have a look uh, at some uh, specific guidelines which are the ones proposed by Nielsen several years ago uh, as I suggested you uh, these are a uh, first uh, high level uh, explanation is already given in this uh, playlist uh, by these uh, researchers uh, working for the Nielsen company and we'll go through each of them trying to understand what kind of uh, checks we need to do or what kind of issues we need to look for when we are evaluating an interface com com um, uh, with respect to this set of guidelines okay so first of all the statement uh, of the guidelines uh, is uh, um, summarized in this slide so we have the 10 titles of the 10 guidelines uh, and we'll go through each of them in order and try to understand what they mean then as an exercise today or tomorrow let's see how we can manage the time we'll try to apply this guideline to some of your designs that you submitted in the lab number one you remember hmm? so we're trying to, to reason about those okay um, so this is the actual initial text uh, declared by Nielsen on his website uh, about uh, the content of the guideline so guideline number one is the system should always keep users informed about what is going on through appropriate feedback within reasonable time so basically it, uh, it implements uh, two principles visibility and uh, feedback hmm? so we are uh, converting the general principles into specific things to look for because the, the heuristics should be more operational no? should be easy to check uh, when you have some links here there are in in say pages that explain these guidelines more in the Nissan uh, website so this means for example about uh, uh, the feedback uh, uh, all uh, sorts of uh, progress dialogues uh, all sort of uh, confirmation messages that says the system state okay where was the data accepted or not uh, did my operation was uh, executed or not or uh, feedback about you know the uh, validation of a given uh, input in this case the strength of a password may be weak may be strong may be accepted or rejected something that may also happen so some feedback happens after the fact after you uh, you know ask for a password reset uh, then it will tell you I did this the system sent you an email so after the action has done has been completed they give you feedback or while the action is executing for example for long performing actions I'm giving you the feedback that something is happening on the left or something is at a given percentage of completion which is better of course in the second uh, case with respect to the first one the first one is that is just a generic animation that tells me i'm still alive i'm not promising that the task will finish in one second or 12 days we don't know it will finish sooner or later i'm working on it hmm? and uh, i always have this suspicion that the gif is still rotating but the system is stuck okay <laughs> The, the, the image uh, could be still executing while the system is stopped in this case we have a progress bar that fills up and maybe in some cases also messages that we telling us what the what's doing at this stage so it gives us much more confidence about an estimation of how much how much time should, should should we expect to wait and also uh, some information about what is doing hmm? uh, visibility these are examples I took from this uh, web page where uh, I researched some, some years ago just uh, 
took the liberty of checking the nascent guidelines with respect to the websites that were available at the time huh? so uh, there are some more specific examples and the feedback uh, about uh, maybe about different uh, aspects of the system different uh, uh, giving us visibility over different uh, parts of the system the, the easiest one is time of course some action that takes time so we know we need to give feedback on that or space your inbox is 99% uh, full so you should delete something so in your uh, cloud provider you know you, in your email provider you always have a bar that tells you how much space you are using and how much space is left for you to use so it's again a progress indicator it's not a time progress it's a space progress in that case so it gives you quick visibility about the uh, space availability or changes hmm? so i when i save something when i delete something when i update something i should have a confirmation that, that my action that was supposed to change the system status indeed it changed it so I'm asking you to do something, to modify something, and so you should confirm that my com uh, modification request has been honored by the system. I don't need this when just getting information. If I'm asking some information from the system, the system just needs to provide information. It doesn't need to tell me, I gave you the information you wanted. Of course, I see it. You don't need to tell me. But if I try, if I ask you to change something, I don't see the change immediately. So there are two types of feedback. Either I can see the change immediately, or you tell me that you did it. Hmm? So if I have, a, for example, a to-do list application and I insert a new task, then when I insert the task, the task will appear there. So I need no confirmation. I will see the task there. It was not there. The other ones are, you know, shifting down and they make room for it or if i'm sending an email the email does not appear in the inbox of course it's not an incoming mail so i need an extra confirmation that the email has actually been sent so the feedback is actually maybe a message or maybe the data itself being shown but in any case we need to do something um, again whether the system is doing something or not and so for the loading indicator maybe you are doing some other action but your another part of the system is still processing for example or still uploading or still computing or still updating so you should need know also that the system is doing something else uh, in maybe in the ground huh? um, if for example you, have, you are developing something with your ide you, with your developing environment and you need to know whether the program is running or stopped or if it's in the run mode or in debug mode so you have, you have small icons, no? the, the green arrow usually, they will tell you whether the program is running or you can stop it or can or you can de uh, run in debug mode, we stop at a breakpoint. No? So, uh, so we are using, the, you are seeing the IDE, your Eclipse or JetBrains or whatever uh, interface you have, you can enter code, you can browse from files, but also you are, you are, you are managing a program that is running and you want to know the state of this program is it running did it terminate with an exception or is it stopped at the breakpoint or so so some indicators about what what's happening behind all the controls or all the other the other actions that you you are doing currently hmm? or uh, feedback about what would happen if you do something so maybe when you go over a button you have a pop-up that will tell you if you click here something will happen or maybe a preview you are trying to print a page so before confirming to print a page you have the preview of how the page would look like on the printer so it's a, a, a prior feedback something that will show you what will happen before it happens hmm? it's all kind of information that will tell you will guide you uh, in understanding what the system is doing actually the state evolution of the system and if you have a long running task maybe you have a, a stronger completion signal maybe an audio signal something flashing say okay your file has been com your you know, video file has been converted so it's a long running task uh, you not only you need a, a progress bar but probably the program 
the window will be minimized or sent to the background and so it will need to attract your attention hmm? or a new message is arrived or something like that and uh, of course you long or short uh, depends on the user hmm? so the rule of thumb uh, more or less is that if the task is less than one second you just need to show that the action has been executed okay if it's uh, more than that you need some uh, intermediate visibility so the task has been started and so maybe a waiting state or something like that uh, uh, and then it has been finished hmm? if it's more than two or three seconds uh, it's probably better to have to to have an estimate a progress bar or something like that hmm? so as a, a general rule hmm? so instantaneous or quick or fast for the users means one second uh, so the second uh, heuristic Mm, ensuring the match between the system and the real world hmm? it's strange uh, the system should speak the user's language with words phrases and concepts familiar to the user rather than system oriented terms follow real world conventions making information appear in a natural and logical order so the this is about uh, metaphors and language language so using words and sentences in a way in the same language that the, that the user is meaning them so always speak the language of the user um, in, try to avoid the technical terms that you are in, that you have inside your organization uh, and use a word that you are sure that your user can understand it's easy because he, when we are doing some user testing it's always easy to spot the words that have a, a difficult meaning for the users so always strive for using this the simple words hmm? and direct meaning uh, all try to avoid uh, what all the bureaucratic issues uh, bureaucratic institutions are doing they are full of terms that you don't understand because maybe they are the more precise one they'll be finding inside the bureaucratic machine they have a specific meaning but the users don't know them hmm? and um, I, I have many examples in mind inside the polytechnic of how how we need to distinguish huh, many meanings huh? for example uh, uh, if I use the, the Italian words that the, the corso okay in italian it, it, should, it means the degree you are enrolled in so you are in the course or in the degree of computer engineering uh, but informally you would say i am in the degree you wouldn't use corso eh? sono nella laurea non nel corso di laurea if you speak in, in, in italian okay so your first choice word would be laurea would not be corso and we will use corso for this course for example human computer interaction is a course and uh, we use uh, in insegnamento for that uh, it's a bad choice of words for the bureaucratic issues we have a definition for each uh, so we know what's an insegnamento what the course is but it's not the term you would use it And also, insegnamento is impossible to translate, so it's, uh, that's why I'm using the Italian uh, words for, for this example. So, uh, and it's, it's even difficult for us when we write the document to use the right terms because they are so unnatural, it's not the right choice, it's not what people have in mind. So we are making an, an extra complexity, an extra level of translation between the concept we have in mind and the word that you see on the screen and that makes it uh, more difficult language and also metaphors so if we are doing some direct manipulation you know i have an object i can control some of its properties but on a screen on a computer uh, screen i am changing or modifying or clicking or touching some items 
that represents something else so i may have a slider on the screen that represents the volume of my video playing in the background that slider is just an abstract representation of a real slider or a real knob that you would have in a, on a physical amplifier probably and that in turn that slider will be even a metaphor for the level of uh, the strength of the vo of the of the volume so we are also always always playing with metaphors with something that would represent something else right? so for example we are accustomed to having libraries of content and uh, the or metaphor for this library is having different containers of different types of documents so we are not saying that the library contains files but the library contains music contains movies contains tv shows and so on they are files but we are we are presenting them in a way that represent that give meaning have more meaning to you hmm? because I had 27 files. No, I had 20 music, uh, music songs and three m movies. Hmm? Um, this is a print preview window. So we have the metaphor of the piece of paper here. So we have, we have a state visibility. We see what will happen, but we also have a very clear projection of or correspondence between the virtual world with all the properties we are setting up for printing and uh, some physical object that we know we can touch we can measure uh, so we are in this way building a mental model between the different properties that we are setting here and what happened in the real world so metaphors is a, a way uh, for creating a mental model of the behavior of a uh, of the system that would match the behavior of the physical world hmm? so we know a lot about the physical world in, in, in its very different aspects so if we can construct the system in a way that the behavior of the system and the behavior of the interface of the system behaves in the same way as the real world we don't need any training because the system behaves as the real world does up to a given point because of course if we are building technology objects we want them to perform better than the real world so up to a given point we are trying to mimic what, what happens in the real world but we can do better and then w that's where things become difficult because you need to leave the metaphor and increase it or empower it make the interface do something more than the physical world can do hmm? so that's uh, for example when you're moving files between folders the difference between copy and paste doesn't exist in the real world if you have a piece of paper you can only move it around making a copy is a completely different operation when you're moving files across folders okay virtual folders may have many copies of the same files in different places saved in different in different places so when you are copying or dragging and dropping and you, uh, you hold control to copy instead of uh, moving you are uh, augmenting the metaphor it's not it's no longer moving a sheet of paper between two different folders but it's doing something more that would not be possible with a real piece of paper we get it but we, we should present it in an incremental way to the user first the, nat the natural way of moving and second the uh, the empowered ways of dealing with the object uh, with this example there are no if you think about maybe windows when you're moving a file across folders on the same drive the default action is to move if you are dragging it to a window on a different drive maybe on a usb key the default action was to copy not to move so it's a inconsistency in behavior according to a detail of the configuration which is not very we are accustomed for, for that and we are happy that we are when we are copying something onto a usb key it doesn't disappear from the source one bad one bad one but when we are moving across different folders it gets actually moving 
but some physics is not very transparent we learned it hmm? maybe we learned it in a bad way so when you come there you don't have the file anymore because you moved instead of copying it so there are many metaphors that we can exploit the easiest ones are uh, those related with office uh, uh, objects uh, uh, okay the, the, the jargon issues uh, also categories you need to have menu items uh, everything you know this, you see this familiar uh, adjective that uh, pops up everywhere so users should not be surprised what they see hmm? they should find something that they already know okay number three user control and freedom there was also a principle about user control users often choose system function by mistake so mistake is normal it's not the exception often a mistake in the same sentence not sometimes or rarely often they make mistakes so that's the normal case always remember and we'll need a clearly marked emergency emergency exit to leave the unwanted state without having to go through a, an extended dialogue so one simple way is supporting undo back exit cancel it's easy to do well back exit and cancel are easy undo is a bit more complex because you already did something and you need to undo it but uh, uh, in many cases you just forget now for example you have a wizard like uh, interface when you're asking you know a user to enroll or make a survey so you have many screens and for every screen you have a forward maybe a backward button but if you are if you are on the fourth screen through the sequence uh, you can go back to the third one you can go forward to the fifth one but can you leave it can you exit can you just close it so do you have a cancel button it's not just backwards there are two levels of undo in this case undoing the last page and then doing the whole the whole procedure so we should provide exit or undo actions for every level in which we are entering the user also there's also a finer level of undo i'm starting to write into a text box and they want to delete it so i can can i leave the text box and delete it so the individual wi widget or i chose a date it's the wrong one can you reset the content of that at that form to the state before i entered it hmm? so there are many levels the widget the page the sequence and i should be able to leave one of them if i if i'm not in the state i want so for example we have a search interface here on the, on the left where all the details about what to find and so on and we have a very highlighted find button to confirm the action i want to find but also we have a cancel search and a cancel again at the top here they are very uh, small they're much more much smaller but they give you a way of closing this window without searching actually anything there's no x window x uh, button here so there's not an explicit way of closing it so there's a, a another way hmm? uh, this also means that uh, having one window with only one okay button at the bottom is always wrong hmm? that's you cannot say the user you, please answer me yes or yes okay or okay okay or not okay or, or, or go back confirm or cancel otherwise huh? it's not a choice huh? uh, and the same is here we have a way of going back so in this case it is not readable by the, in, for the resolution but we don't care uh, because we don't care about what's written there's some survey made of six different steps and here are the questions for the survey on the right what, it's explicit it's clear that they can change the step by clicking on these buttons so they can move back and forward freely user control is there a reason why i need to uh, force a given order or can the user move freely so i can go out of question number one and, and jump to question number two or it's also 
clear that I can click on another item in the, in the main menu on the left. They are not disabled. The menu didn't disappear. It's still there. It tells me that I'm in this section, in the survey section. It tells me by a different color and by the continuation of the, of the background here. So it tells me that I'm zooming. Here, all this part is inside survey. But I see if I click somewhere else, there's nothing that discourages me or blocks me for doing that. Of course, if I'm going out of this, I will lose what I did here. It's normal, but I can do that. There's, there are no obstacles. I am in control. I can go where I want. Hmm? So, uh, okay, these are examples. Uh, uh, allow the user to explore different alternative paths. If there are many ways of doing the same thing, please pro provide them. No? Desktop interfaces are very good at providing 25 different ways for doing the same thing. So if you are observing another people, another person doing something that you do every day, they will do it in a different way. You will probably get irritated. So what are you doing there? Okay. But uh, the effect is the same. Um, okay. So here, are, here are some uh, other examples. Uh, um, yeah, for example, this uh, spreadsheet here is telling you what happens and gives you the opportunity of uh, accepting the formula that you may be changed and visualize the formula with highlights to the data. So it's very rich visualization or just to uh, abandon it. So you may know that in many cases, just hitting the escape key would leave the formula unchanged. But this is more explicit, maybe for people which are not uh, so, uh, they don't have so, uh, so a strong background hmm? in, uh, in the interface and so on. Okay. Number four. Okay, this word is already one of the strong words that we, uh, we are hearing since the first class. Consistency and standards. Users should not have to wonder whether different words, situations, or actions mean the same thing. So, if it means the same thing, you should call it in the same way. If you are calling it in a different way, then it means a different thing. Okay, don't try to have fantasy or to use different synonyms or, or to just to for the sake uh, you know, of have, having a rich language. It's not a, a matter of style here, it's a matter of understanding. And also follow the platform conventions. Okay? um if we have a cancel button we call it cancel we don't call it abandon or leave why abandon and cancel more or less have the same meaning but our operating system using uses cancel everywhere so let's follow that convention there's nothing uh, there's nothing wrong with other choices but that one is the choice that that is standard, that the users expect. Hmm? Um, so, for example, this is the one old screenshot from the, from the Gmail interface. The words here, inbox or send mails or draft or all my, are very plain words, direct. Hmm? They're not very they're not trying to be clever with words or in some strange meanings so uh, it's very difficult to understand the wrong meaning for each of these uh, for any of these labels they have been very carefully selected a draft is not sent a sent is not the outbox for example in outlook you have a, a folder called outbox which is ambiguous because the outbox may be a, a, a parking place where I put mail to be sent or it may also mean the mail that already went out. Uh, this for a, it came from a long time ago where the Outlook program didn't send emails immediately because uh, internet connectivity was uh, expensive so you had to co usually compose the messages and then go online and send all of them. So you have a two-stage procedure, save in the outbox and then, in the outbox and then send them 
really one today we are always online this doesn't make sense of so this word outworks is difficult to understand it's depending on the experience you have the background you have it may mean different things for you in this case we have no such confusion and uh, also in this case we have two different ribbons for office uh, uh, i think the first one is from powerpoint and the second one is for excel they look very similar they're two different programs and uh, the command and the icon for inserting a table in uh, powerpoint is the same icon and the same command for inserting a table in uh, in was uh, in excel probably yeah because we have a little charts here or word so it's all, it's it's even difficult for me to understand uh, which program is which because the, f the, the individual functions are so well standardized across the different suite of programs so we are sure that there are differences because this program is just uh, only as a chart icon and this one has many richer options for the same concept okay that's good but at least we have the consistency in the colors in the item in the icons and so on and uh, there is no icon here which is called chart as the one on the top this is different from this and they have different names in this case charts is a bit cut out of the wind of the of the picture is the name of the category of the group it makes sense it's careful design no? the attention to the details each and every word we should decide what it means uh, use it consistently across all the system all the interface that we have hmm? okay um, and the the consistency is in the wording but it's also in the position so for example we see some dialog windows where the ok and cancel button are in the bottom right and some dialog windows where the ok and cancel are in the top right in a vertical orientation one above the other there are two valid conventions we, we see both uh, at least in our program in our application we try to stick to one of them let's not invent a third one it would be worthless we are wasting our time if we if we are inventing something which is out of standards and choose one and use them consistently mm -hmm. um, and also all the okay cancel yes and no questions that also implement the the, the, the previous uh, uh, heuristic letting the user escape uh, they should be always uh, clear for example do you want to interrupt the task it's a bad question it's a negative question i want yes means interrupt no means continue hmm? so always ask questions where the positive answer is uh, do something and the negative answer is don't in this case a positive answer would be don't continue stop hmm. so try to be as positive as po avoid negative there, there are no negatives here but it's there's a negative hidden in the interrupting task if, if you are asking system to do something so yes okay would be for doing no a cancel will be for not doing do you want to continue yes not do you want to finish or to interrupt hmm? and uh, if possible try to label buttons with the actual effect that the action is doing we already discussed this one you are not limited to having okay buttons there hmm? uh, if you have a list of names a uh, categories try to find whether there are any already defined vocabularies okay if you want to seek for where uh, for the question uh, okay nationality for example let's seek a list of states from some online database this one is easy the list of states of the country in the world is known to everybody it's a public data but uh, if you are asking for a profession this is more difficult 
every website will give you a, a different list of professions and you have difficulties in finding some of them so maybe try to find if there are there's any standard or some any vocabulary or any definition or any category that you can just copy let's use that there's a good chance that also some other designers are doing the same and so by chance or by copying from the same source you achieve the consistency across different uh, websites or different applications hmm? so that's that's not easy because it depends on what you are asking when, when when you have a list but if possible try to say okay i am making up this list myself or can i copy it from somewhere and copying is cheaper also uh, for example do you want to run this software no? this dialog window these are different variations okay um okay cancel mm, it's not a good question it doesn't flow in english do you want to run the software cancel not. the right answer will be yes or no from a grammar point of view cancel or okay is not a proper answer to this question okay or cancel would stand would stay with a, a question like uh, um, open the software full stop not a question okay cancel or still better do you want to run the software run don't run which uh, is how they told you, you know, in the primary school to reply in the primary school they told you when you reply to a question always repeat the question part hmm? not just say yes or not yes i am going there so that's the same here it um it removes you from remembering the question when reading the answer hmm? five error prevention we need good error messages but it's better to prevent errors from happening so we said before that users will make errors we need uh, uh, undoes we need cancels we need the uh, escape action and so on if they make errors but before that are we able to prevent the error from happening uh, is uh, if a menu item doesn't make any sense at that point the user should not be able to select it uh, uh, for example um, here we have an update button which is disabled until the user writes something here so we are getting rid of the possibility of hitting update by mistake okay there will be other thousands of mistakes why by clicking update with the wrong test written here i could write a, a wrong word here and i update and there will be an error i need to be able to recover from that but at least one error updating with an empty field is prevented mechanically i would say it's impossible to press that button and also by playing on the visual of the different actions so we saw that the three different button the three dialogues here had very similar buttons for the yes and no there was just a hint that the default action was the run or yes one because the button was highlighted we can push this drive the users to doing the right action or the normal action the one that doesn't require thinking by making it more prominent and then if the user needs to go back of course he needs to to think about it and so it, it, we can spend the time for looking for something which is less visible hmm? but it also tells you that the normal case in normal by default you should click here unless something happened hmm? and uh, another technique is uh, filtering 
or auto completion you start typing something and the system is presenting you with sensible alternatives to what you are starting to type so you can select one of these alternatives click with one click or one tap instead of completing it yourself that every type and every key you press is a chance for error if i select one of these options i will have one two three four five six seven eight nine chances i saved nine chances for errors for clipping the right the, the wrong letter there or don't remember or not remembering the right spelling of a word especially this is much more important if the name i need to write should be from a closed list of items so what happens if i'm writing something that is not valid hmm? i cannot have a list of uh, one million items but i can filter and present you some of them and refine it hmm? so you are anticipating the feedback and you are in a way preventing an error so giving an easier way out to the user that's the long way of writing it all or the easy, easy way of selecting one of them and the easy way is less error prone than the long way huh? so you are preventing not, not preventing in the sense of absolutely preventing making it impossible because the user should be in control remember the other guidelines but at least uh, you are you know uh, offering a shortcut i would say a shortcut that doesn't have any error possibility hmm? um, and this one is also a very stupid but a form where the cursor is already inside the first field you don't run the risk of selecting the language or uh, submitting the form because you are positioned here so the first action would be to write there you don't have to explicitly select this one and risking to forget because something else maybe catches your attention more hmm. and uh, so in general the principles you know, for for uh, avoiding uh, avoiding errors uh, are making simple uncluttered user interface it should be clear what's there avoiding confusion blocking bad input at the beginning so if your interface only accepts numbers if the user clicks a letter don't give an error message just ignore that letter give just a warning you pressed a ignored so that big uh, bad data doesn't enter the system at all hmm? and uh, if possible remove constraints so you see you, we saw that something should be put here and, uh, and if you don't put anything the system will not go forward but we can we do better can we give a default value so that we are not even forcing the user to tie something if the default is good for them so pre pre-selecting some sensible value and then the user is free to change it but if it doesn't something good happens anyway hmm? um, okay number six another very important one A recognition rather than recall minimizing the user's memory load by making objects actions options visible the user should not have to remember information from one part of the dialog to another instruction for user of the system should be visible or re retrievable whenever appropriate so the sec there are two different parts one about remembering information the second about health or instructions the general principle is that uh, for the human brain remembering something is always harder than recognizing it when it sees them I show you three objects and you, you tell me which one or I ask you to tell me one of them hmm? unless it's a very it's an information which is very 
strong inside of you like your name you don't have any trouble remembering your name everything else requires an effort for being remembered <laughs> and so for example auto completion you i know a function for a c fun from the library where this was that looks like c plus plus no php probably okay uh i know that some function is in, is in the library when i start start typing it will tell me the list of functions that match and i recognize the one the one i want I don't need to remember it yes some i need to remember something a part of it but in general i just say okay that's the function or there's also another one so i need to recognize which one of them hmm? fonts here on the right if imagine if this dialogue came all uh, uh, in, on the same font with the same font so you have the name of the fonts all written the same way it's very difficult to remember the difference between i don't know basquerel uh, and uh, bastion for example what's the difference and you need to remember them because you saw them here you just have to recognize which one fits uh, your needs at this moment you are not recognizing the name you are recognizing the shape maybe also the name after a while you learn the name and re you remember it and you or you recognize it when you see it written but at the first stages you recognize which 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 shape huh, is better for you at the moment um it's another example which is a this is a, a critical one I, I opened the same uh, text file in two different editors the left, the left one is uh, vs code from microsoft very modern one and the, the right one is uh, vi vim and i try to do the same actions in both replacing all end words with or words it's a text it's a text operation a text transformation substitution operation and that's the difference i could appreciate how well designed is vs code because this window this widget here for text replacing is very very rich replace and with or there's a little arrow that makes the replace appear or disappear so it can mut mutate from find to replace with just a click of the arrow and then when you are specifying what to find we you have three different uh, strange icons but if you move the mouse there they will tell you okay case sensitive or insensitive whole words or parts of the word or regular expression dot star is the something that reminds us of a regular expression there are a lot of good heuristics here there's a preview with this match in real time it tells me how many matches are there in the in my document and then we have the replacement text and i could replace one or replace all of them the icons are not good at, the f at first sight i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to tell but with the mouse with the help you know the guideline said instruction should be easily retrievable when you need them i needed them and it was right there um the only one that was more difficult to remember is this one i don't remember it either right now i checked it was yesterday no yes yesterday i forgot it already so we need to open it again and check what this uh, is doing 
and the, uh, the, the, the X, of course, is the cancel. Close this window. That's natural. So there's a lot packed in so few pixels. It's all there. Recognition. You don't have to remember anything. It tells you what you need, what you need to decide. And of course, it comes with defaults. So the default would be case insensitive, not regular expression. I needed to check this one because and should be changed as a, as a, as a whole word. Hmm? But I realized that when they, when I saw the high number, okay, oh no, now it's changing also the, the part of the words. Okay, the same uh, option with the uh, VI is this sort of command. So the, there is no recognition here. Either you know it or you don't. And you remember it or you don't. It turns out I didn't. <laughs> because the first try, now I remember that from my old times in my, I learned VI when there was only one, uh, one option, VI itself. And uh, so part of it are in my fingers, okay? But I don't use very often for complex operation right now. And so I remember the way of, uh, they had, I had to delimit the start of the end of the word. I remember backslash parentheses, open and close parentheses, and uh, it was wrong. The actual syntax is uh, less than and minor, um, less than and, and, and greater than for saying the end after the beginning of the word and before the end of the word. That's the syntax of these regular expressions. The backslash uh, parentheses uh, are for marking different parts of the expression to replace it. And I remember the, the pattern. So globally, on all the file, search for this and, uh, and substitute what you matched, slash slash, it's a shortcut for the same with an or, Globally, global means even more than once in the same row, in the same line, if you find more than once, or more than one match. Okay, so that's something I remembered. Command line interfaces are based on recall, remembering stuff, knowing the rules. Visual interfaces are more based on recognition. I show you what you can do, and they give you hints to understand what happens when you do something. Mm? And which is strong, very strong. Mm? Uh, so how can we help users? So can, can we spot some mistakes or some problems into the interface? Uh, codes. Any interface that uses codes. Uh, we are as developers, we may be lazy. We may, for example, in the schedule for this course, we have all the list of the, of the classes, and there's a column with the class type. So it's an L for a lecture or an EL for a lab, um, for a lab session. Hmm? These codes don't mean anything to you. They mean something to us because it's how we define our hours, how we need to fill in the back office, there's nothing that you see, our, our log of the, of the classes that we have to sign at the end to get the, the course, uh, say, closed and paid, by the way. Uh, so they, they mean something to us because it's some internal procedure. So we are lazy. And so we, I, I, recall, I, I realized it yesterday when we prepared uh, this, this slide, that we could have easily written lecture and lab okay there's not much <laughs> effort in, in that it just was uh, something that he ha i had in mind I, we used the code and so we asked for and we had to write a legend you know uh what's that what's the browser so we did an extra effort As a consequence of a bad choice, now, all this L, E, L, and so on here. What do they mean? Oh, there's a legend there. We had to write the legend, to type the legend. So it was an extra effort. 
this is a, uh, uh, it should have rung a bell with us. Why do we need a legend? We are making an indirect information, providing an indirect information when we could provide a direct one. It's not that lecture is so, uh, occupies so much space than L. We have space here, huh? that's not an issue. We just didn't think it at the time. When I had to think about that, I, reali I realized, so that's why we are doing these checks. Um, avoid asking for information that you don't, ne don't really need, or you don't need yet. So always simplify the information that you ask. Uh, now I need this information, later on I may, mean, I may need more. Don't ask for all of, the, all of it at the beginning. Only ask it when it's needed. And provide all sorts of previews, no, like in the VS Code, the number of matches helps me understand about what happened, what's happening. Like this one, this 43 here. And the highlighting of the mesh word. Hmm? Okay, number seven, flexibility. So we are on the other side here. So uh, basically the recall helps uh, the recognition, sorry, helps uh, uh, novice users, primarily. It doesn't help uh, VI users, but it helps other users that can learn the advanced functionality as they go. They first will use a system, a system with a basic functionality, and as, as they are using the, it, they slowly discover part of new functionality. But then we have the expert users, and the experts don't want every time to go through the easy way of many small steps. The experts want quick ways of doing something that they know how to do. So for every functionality that uh, may be of interest to an expert user, uh, we should have uh, some way of speeding it up, possibly. Maybe not so visible, maybe also partially hidden, because we are targeting experts right now. People that will use the system many times a day. So if there is a way of uh, replying to a message by clicking on the message and clicking on reply and then entering the text, uh, maybe a swipe left uh, will do the same more quickly. We are not removing the easy way with the icon, with the action and so on. We are making an additional way, which is faster, which will be, which will be accessible, will be used by the ones who know it, like a trick like uh, an accelerator like a keyboard shortcut all keyboard shortcuts don't give you any additional capabilities that you already have with the menus they only give you a faster way to access it hmm? and here consistency is also important because if different applications use different inconsistently the different shortcuts you will get angry I'm still searching for the person that decided that in the Italian version of Office application, Control S didn't mean save, okay? But means underline. And to save, what's that? Control F12 or something like that? I, I know I don't know it. Okay. So when I'm using Word and the PC, the computer that I have at home, which is in Italian, for my family sanity, uh, I use the icon for save. But otherwise, control S is so in my fingers. That's the right way of doing that. So, um, and uh, uh, there's also a way uh, of accelerating actions by providing uh, pre-cooked solutions. So, if you want to format a table, you need to format the text, uh, the titles, the alignment, and so on. Or maybe you have already some pre-formatted options. So you don't start from scratch, you start from a template. You format according to the template, and then you can modify it later. So that's an accelerator. Maybe just stop there, and a basic user will just have to select one of those. Maybe the basic user just 
this is that didn't have even understand that he can modify it later he just choose one of them okay a power user can choose one of them and then customize them or any any mix of these actions mm -hmm. so you can replace one action that requires two clicks with an action with a, that requires only a key press or one action that requires maybe 25 clicks for formatting a table with just one preset option it's better than nothing and usually the design taste the quality of the design or who comes out with these color combinations for example is much better than the average user so you will avoid seeing tables with the bright yellow backgrounds and uh, uh, strong red uh, letters and so on that are impossible to look at hmm? uh, the same is also here if you have some totals in this interface you already have a, you can click on one of these buttons it will insert the corresponding formula but you already produce the value of this formula there's, uh, there's a lot of work you you are saving okay because you already know what happens and so you can recognize okay but it's not it's not the average okay maybe it's the, the count and uh, considering sorry that many users still have difficulties and they see that in uh, in sql exercises with between sum and count okay uh, it's something that no, let's say normal user confuse easily so flexibility in summary is default values a uh, sensible def default plus some options to change it the combination of a popular default and a sensible one so if you want you don't have to do anything or if you want you can have some options to modify it hmm? uh, for example you go to the railway station to buy a ticket on the front screen you already have the list of the most popular de uh, de uh, destinations so if you want to go to milano just click the first item if you want to go to some strange place then you need to enter it um exploiting background information for providing more information like this one here i'm providing some information with, which is not essential but we already have this place we already have all the information for providing you something more or a calendar when you have also the weather forecast in a free space at the top of the day it's not essential but there's space there and maybe in planning your events uh, you need to know about the knowing the weather is useful it doesn't require any processing from your brain you will recognize it automatically um, proactivity when a user makes some action maybe you know that there's a highly correlated action that you may propose for example you receive a mail from a mailing list that you don't want to see so you mark that email as a spam the email problem will tell you okay i saw you marked this as spam this is on a mailing list do you want to unsubscribe from the mailing list many mailing lists are, are the unsubscribe instruction already in the mail header so the mail programs knows how to do that hmm? so when it may prompt you for the next step um okay number eight aesthetics and minimalist design which this one it's interesting because this guidelines is nearly 20 more than 20 years old and the meaning of minimalistic design changed over the time but the principle is the same don't clutter don't add useless items dialogue should not contain information which is irrelevant or rarely needed if it, there's some esoteric options let it appear only when needed or when requested only populate the interface with what is relevant now every extra unit of information in a dialogue competes with the relevant units of information and diminishes their relative visibility so if i have three items to fill these are the three important ones if i have 27 items i don't know which ones are the important ones no matter how much i like them it's a lot of confusion i will always have some doubt whether some um, aspects are useful or not hmm? so for example the one on the right is very 
confusing it's just a spreadsheet for computing some totals but you we have a lot of empty cells and each of these cells has a border and there's a divider line so it's heavy from the visual point of view and you don't know if you are really free to leave this empty or should you fill all them should they fill all zeros or maybe they could come with a pre-compiled zeros or maybe they could come in a disabled state and only when i click on one of them it will transform into a text box so that i need to execute some explicit the, the 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 screen would tell me you don't need to enter anything they're all disabled if you want to enter something click and then you can enter so there are many visual cues that will tell us you are free to fill the cells that you need or in this in the left part here you have a search interface and the, by default you search everything so the easy way if you just write something and click search but if you want to filter your search you can open this menu and we only search uh, across i don't know entries photos videos or whatever a subset you are not forcing the user to select uh, where to search stuff by default we'll, this will be closed will be invisible so a normal user will just write something and click on the search button if i need to filter then i can open the filter ask for more detailed information this is not essential choosing this category is not needed for starting a search it's offered as an additional filter an additional capability for only those users who ask for it who click on this arrow hmm? always start minimal what is the minimum amount of information that will let me start this action and once you have the minimum you can ask yourself what can i add or what can some users sometimes need to add the key information must be above the fold at the beginning of the page high on the top the first sentence is the first item the first information you ask is the more important the most important one especially when the screen is small you have a resolution device so not all the form not all the page will fit so what's on the top is more important you know the expression above the fold what it means it comes from newspapers the paper ones i mean no you, when you go to a newspaper stand and buy a newspaper physical one you, they, they come folded okay in two and so there's one part above the fold and one part below the fold and usually if you take if you see it you only only see the titles in the first half page above the fold that part is more visible this, so when it's a newsstand they, you you see that when you have in your hands uh, you take it you will initially see only half of the first page that's the most important space of all your website the first half the first screenshot the first screen of your home page that's where the important information should go hmm? and then all the rest but that's uh, the most important place you have and so you should exploit every pixel every area of that page to convey useful information and use any trick you you can to explain better what this information is what, ac what actions are possible you can exploit colors you exploit alignments you exploit borders dividers and so on for explaining from a visual point of view next chapter will be about visual design from a visual point of view the organization of the information and the possible actions hmm. um, and redundancy is also an important having more than one way po if possible to enter some information there's a low level redundancy like something that you can enter with a click of a mouse or with a space in the keyboard for selecting or deselecting a checkbox for example like uh, you know in youtube you can pause and restart uh, a video with just uh, the space bar or by clicking on it you can use arrows to go forward and back or you can click on the on the timeline so there are different ways of accomplishing the same identical tasks and so the user may find one 
more useful than another at a given point in time some is are, are more visible if you click on the video some are more hidden like accelerators like the spacebar but once you learn it you use it more often probably nine ag always again errors you, you realize that three of ten three out of ten guidelines are about user errors hmm? uh, escaping preventing errors and then helping users recognize diagnose and recover from errors and this means that okay when when the inevitable happens so an error is made try to explain the user what went wrong why and what especially most importantly what he can do about it what can the user do once the error has happened constructively suggest a solution they say for example your username is already taken please choose a different one in many cases you are they are already suggesting you what new username you could enter they are all, all bad ones we never choose them but that's a suggestion password must be at least six characters and can only contain letters and numbers for example so what went wrong they give they don't give you suggestions here only they tell you what's wrong uh, with them hmm? the email provided does not appear to be valid so what the, what's the reason hmm? or what are the actions uh, if something was wrong uh, with this uh, this is a very bad uh, um, image here so we shouldn't have it there it's just cluttering the interface is not telling us uh, it's not helping us you know, in dealing with the error but at least it says okay if there's an error uh you, you i don't leave you just with the error page i tell you where you can go instead go to the listing of the articles or browse my blog uh, maybe you are looking something there so this link was not valid uh, but there's something that can offer you to do instead error messages should be easy to identify should not be confused with instructions or with or with confirmation confirmation will be green and error will be the red for example if we are playing on colors uh, focus on the cause and the location and maybe a link to more documentation explaining the cause of the errors so in many many in many cases when you have a complex system you have an error message and then you can click on the error message and have a help page or documentation page that will explain you the error messages hmm? and if possible give a suggestion this suggestion could be in the error message or in the documentation linked to the error message depending on, on the case of course hmm? if possible and uh, the last one of course is about documentation help and documentation uh, ideally a system should be usable without any help long gone are the times where people bought the software and then the first thing they did was to read the documentation read the manual it was also a way of uh, spending your time while, while you had to insert 20 7 different floppies to install the program so you had one hour to lose so you can browse the, the, the manual and uh, have an idea of what you did uh, if we apply correctly all the usability rules uh, usually users are able to use the system without any specific help in general at least for the basic functions but if some help is needed it should be available where right on the spot give a way of giving some uh, amount of help uh, or well-written documentation like uh, there are question marks usually that are used to pop up some help uh, or some uh, documentation pages tutorials videos and so on uh, and it's important that all the documentation is very deeply linked with the application so it's not just your application or your website and something somewhere else you have the documentation because people will not be able to search for that hmm? so if an error message usually should have a question mark next to the error message and the documentation for explaining it a form you should have um i don't know if i have yeah 
there are maybe something in the form that you will just pop up a very short suggestion and maybe you can click for having more information so a very short hint or tooltip and then uh, a link for more information hmm. uh, something like this is not very useful like a help button here help for what is very general so maybe this will go to the main uh, documentation website or whatever but it's much better if you have a contextual help help for each item in your interface that will tell you specifically what you need there not a general help because mm, people will rarely select that they won't go there mm. they want help with a specific situation and uh, one good uh, uh, suggestion to remember is always provide examples don't explain the principles in the documentation or in the help give some examples people will understand much better and much uh, faster especially when you have something complex some formula some choice uh, some form which is complicated give a couple of examples and people will understand instead if you are trying to give the general rule you can also give the general rule but then you you can do some interpretations of the rules and some concrete examples otherwise if you only give the rule you just need to do the to make the examples in their mind and also not errors are made equal some are more just li uh, light errors some are more strong or more have more consequences so for example when you print something there's a warning message your print is outside the margins the margins in your documents uh, it always happens because we have at least two different standards for paper size, sizes the letter size and the a4 size which are not compatible so if you are trying to print a document that is made with a, with a different paper size, the printer or the, the program will tell you that. Is it bad or not? I, am I losing some content of the page so something will get cut out or something will just not be so nicely centered so I'm just losing some margin? It's an aesthetic issue or it's a content issue? so that they should generate two different errors one is your page will not will not be properly centered that's it but no content will be cut out and the other will be some content will not appear in the paper because it's outside the printable the real printable margins programs are not so clever to, for telling you that that you just tell you the margins are wrong and so you have to to figure it out, it out usually by trying okay and um, oh there's a one last point here about one kind of help or documentation which is now on every website or the terms and conditions that users need to accept which is for which there's no really a solution okay because uh, the from the usability point of view if the user should accept some conditions for using your website you should be able to explain them in clear terms very easily understandably and shortly usually it doesn't happen because these terms uh, have, uh, must be legally binding hmm? and so uh, they are written by lawyers and they are usually several pages long and so we are in a situation where the users are forced to accept something that they don't read they will never read by construction by definition no. it's just a uh, you know a legal loophole that say okay but you accepted to that but there's no way i could have read that let alone understanding it so for this we have no solution there's a lot of uh, uh, f you know uh, bad influ influences over design that come from legislation for example all the stuff about the cookies again every website there's something that gets in the way you open website and you have to click uh, do you want notifications no do you want to accept the cookies yes but do you accept also the, per, the customization cookie no and you accept the terms of, you, you have to click four or five times if there are no ads if there are commercials just to get to the home page 
so we are fighting for streamlining the user experience but we are forced to insert all this kind of stuff bad stuff into our website okay so that's the they are the, the 10 guidelines what we we start doing tomorrow that we'll do tomorrow is to pick some of the examples there are many i publish them in the um, on the website so you can also have a look uh, at what all, all the examples that others have provided and each of them is categorized with a, a thumbs up or thumbs down and saying, saying okay people were considered good or bad so i want tomorrow to spend uh, some time in picking some examples and commenting them uh, it would be useful for us to have a list uh, of these guidelines printed somewhere okay and we don't have a double projector and i don't have enough space here to for writing them down so i would for myself you have you are more options because you have the computer you can look at the example and add the guidelines on your computer but it's good to have the list printed so that okay we can check each of them okay say okay this violates number three or whatever okay let's go that's all for tonight thank you <laughs>